Texas Midland, USA, west of the Alleghenies, east of the Mississippi, the rolling prairie that was America's second frontier when the Republic was young, when the new nation could not be sure it had the strength to stand or the will to live. Along this lake that washes the shores of western New York State and a corner of Pennsylvania, on this soil that became the states of Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois, history was made. Here, America grew to a sovereign nation that drew strength and sentence from the farm, the mines, and the factories of this territory. From Buffalo to Chicago, from Cleveland to St. Louis and Peoria, and such cities as Ashtabula, Erie, Massillon, Fort Wayne, Indianapolis, Zanesville, Kokomo, place names that spell America, as dyed in the wool Yankee as corn on the cob, the World Series, and the hoedown square dance on Saturday night. This then is the heart of the USA rich in fertile soil and the bounty of great harvest, richer still in the wealth of its subsoil, the coal and other minerals of infinite variety, and thrice blessed in the vastness of its industrial plant. Factories without number, turning raw materials into finished products for purchase and use throughout the nation. But to give economic meaning and social value to the product of this great region, to turn commodities into dollars, another vital element must always be present. Transportation by rail, keystone in the economic structure of Midland, USA. To move farm produce from the land to the tables of our people. To haul our coal, iron ore, and other raw materials from the mines and shipping docks to our mills and factories. To transport finished products from industrial centers to consumer markets. This has been and is today the job of the Nickel Plate Road. Today, the Nickel Plate Road is inseparably a part of the territory it serves, integrated into the pattern of its industry, its agriculture, and its way of life. For shippers, an originating and terminating line throughout Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, northwestern Pennsylvania, and western New York State. A line offering dependable, fast freight service east and west through the western gateways of St. Louis, Peoria, and Chicago. And on the east through Buffalo and Pittsburgh Junction to and from New York and New England, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, and the Philadelphia area. For passenger travel east and west, the most up-to-date diesel-powered train offering luxurious comfort for sleeping and daytime travel. Six convenient silver and blue streamlined passenger trains. Gracious living in diner or lounge with courteous but unobtrusive service when you want it. This is first class hotel luxury in convenient service between Chicago and Buffalo and between Cleveland and St. Louis. Connecting at Chicago and St. Louis for the west and the Pacific coast and with through service at Buffalo for New York and other points east. Diversification is the key word for the territory served by the nickel plate. Soybeans, number two crop in this territory, and one of the most versatile crops taken out of the earth. Today, almost half of all the soybeans produced in the United States are grown within 25 miles of the road's rail system. Throughout this area, rich and varied natural resources. Clay for pottery, fire brick, limestone, dolomite for furnace and refractory operations, silica and foundry sand. Coal, number one subsoil product in the nickel plate territory. From the mines of southeastern Ohio, more than seven million tons a year. Nickel plate coal moves principally to Ohio, Michigan, and Canadian markets for industrial and domestic use. A considerable tonnage also moves to the company's coal dock at Huron, Ohio, for transshipment up the Great Lakes. 
Here, a modern electrically operated car dumper loads coal into lake vessels at the rate of a train load each hour. In recent years, millions of dollars have been spent to enlarge the road's coal car fleet and to modernize dock facilities for the handling of waterborne traffic at Huron. The nickel plate ore docks at Huron, servicing freighters from Duluth and other Great Lakes ore shipping centers. Immediately on arrival, any time during the day or night, nickel plate Hewlett ore unloaders go to work. Each bucket handles 17 tons at every bite, unloading a large ship in a few hours. Within a surprisingly short time, that ore has been waybilled, assembled into trains, and is on its way to iron and steel plants in Ohio, West Virginia, and Pennsylvania. The nickel plate territory, forming a pattern of industrial enterprise unmatched in any other sector of the country for the value and variety of its products. Iron ore and coal, manufactured iron and steel, agricultural implements, household appliances, machinery and tools, metal stamping, glass and chemical products, paints, varnishes, paper products, livestock, meat packing, food products, and a wide range of farm and dairy products. All these products and many more from the farms, the mines, and the factories make up the highly diversified traffic of the nickel plate road. Products that are picked up at the country stations, the towns, and the big cities and hustle to the nearest division points to be consolidated into high-speed through trains for delivery to the consumer markets of the nation. Over a system developed for fast, dependable transportation, operating on round-the-clock schedules, moving freight swiftly, safely, economically, in any and all kinds of weather. In cooperation with its eastern connections, Nickel Plate provides for arrival of shipments in Chicago and St. Louis from New York, New England and the Philadelphia area on the second morning, thus cutting a full day from previous shipping time. Service available for less than carload as well as carload shipping. Eastbound 2, the road's present day high speed freight service, reflects the train frequency and dependability needed to match the sharpened tempo of American commerce. Let's ride three of the many mainline eastbound nickel high-speed trains. One from each western gateway. Chicago, Peoria, St. Louis. Of course, there are just as many westbound trains. Here's PB-12 departing Peoria, 2.30 a.m., carrying perishables and other commodities from the west. At the same time, 2.30 a.m., down in the St. Louis terminal, Nickel Plate's ST-96 pulls out with product of the St. Louis area and the Great Southwest, heading north and east. Rolling now at high speed. Through the night, clear track ahead on Main Line to Frankfurt. At 8 a.m., the same morning and every morning, Nickel Plate CB-12 pulls out of Calumet Yards in Chicago with meats and packing house products livestock, citrus fruits, table produce, and a wide variety of manufactured products. 9 a.m., and here comes PB-12 from Peoria, on time, pulling into Frankfort, Indiana, a nickel plate main dispatch point. No delay, rain or shine, as switch engines go to work. The yard alive with activity, fast, efficient, a.m. and ST-96 in on time from St. Louis. Again a train broken up. Cars switched, classified according to destination. Some via Michigan City for points in western Michigan such as Grand Rapids. Some via Toledo or other gateways for Detroit and eastern Michigan. Others for Cleveland, Buffalo, Pittsburgh and North Atlantic states moving through the Buffalo or Pittsburgh Junction routes. Caboose coupled on. Last from a 700 engine, and PB-12 pulls out of Frankfurt at 10.45 a.m.
ST-96 from St. Louis continues to move its traffic through for Toledo and beyond. This is Bellevue, Ohio, main classification and division point of the nickel plate road, handling thousands of cars a day, east and westbound. CB-12 from Chicago, rolling into Bellevue at 5.35 p.m. And again, switch engines and yard men go to work. Not a minute wasted, not a detail overlooked. Precision machine efficiency in speed and economy of movement. minutes later at 6.15 p.m., arrival at Bellevue of PB-12 from Peoria and Frankfurt. Again, the big job of breaking up a train and switching cars. Again, train reassembly. And one hour after arrival at Bellevue, each train is ready to move eastward again. Almost a new train, with some cars dropped for other destinations, and some cars added for destinations east via Buffalo. CB-12 and PB-12 are on their way to Buffalo. Rolling through the night via Lorraine, Cleveland, Painesville, Ashtabula, Conneaut, Erie, Dunkirk, Buffalo. Two trains almost together. CB-12 from Chicago, PB-12 from Peoria. With pickup cars from St. Louis. Arriving early morning, 4 a.m. To connect with Eastern Lines for New York, New England, and the Philadelphia area. Time en route from Chicago to Buffalo. Distance, 508 miles. Time, 19 hours. From Peoria to Buffalo. Distance, 647 miles. Time, 24 and a half hours. From St. Louis to Buffalo. Distance, 709 miles. Time, 24 and a half hours. How is such a standard of high-speed freight service attained and maintained? By teamwork and keeping in step with the time. Teamwork among nickel platers, teamwork with shippers, and teamwork with connecting railroads. And of great importance, a comprehensive program of improvement involving expenditure of millions of dollars every year for roadway, bridges, yards, and terminal improvements. Radio installation in locomotives and cabooses and all kinds of mechanical devices. Widespread installation of centralized traffic control. All of these and other improvements result in the cutting down of time in transit and the expediting of high-speed freight and passenger service. Traversing one of the most fertile food-producing areas in the United States, the Nickel Plate Road has always been one of the leading grain and table produce carriers of the Midland region. In Cleveland, a notable landmark of the Midland food belt, the Northern Ohio Food Terminal, served exclusively by Nickel Plate, a yard with a capacity for hundreds of cars, acres of steel, brick, and concrete buildings, including huge cold storage facilities. All these comprise an immense trade project that serves as terminal and clearinghouse for 95% of the food supply of the Cleveland metropolitan area. The Niagara Frontier Food Terminal with comparable facilities serves the Buffalo metropolitan area with loading platforms and buildings for hundreds of wholesale grocers and dealers in produce, butter, eggs, and poultry, servicing more than 95% of the population. Nickel Plate strives constantly to reduce freight loss and damage claims. Continuous personnel training in careful handling of freight is part of the program. This emphasis on safe packaging, loading, and stowing even reaches into the shipper's plant to make sure freight is properly handled from assembly lines to consumers. Lading inspection is made available without cost throughout the Nickel Plate area. Serving as a clearinghouse for facts and figures about every city, town, and village on the nickel plate system, the Industrial Development Department has been a vital force in the expanding economy of the region. 
Specialized research and surveys of every kind. Photographs and maps of available industrial sites. Easy to read charts on population trends, climate, public utilities, labor, soil analysis, educational facilities, family life. A complete many-sided picture of life and work in every community. A job of trend and fact-finding undertaken as a public service. Railroads continue to be an important part of American business, touching the lives of every man, woman, and child. But there is also a marked human side to modern railroading, best expressed in terms of occupational pride and community citizenship. A good railroader is a good citizen of the town he lives in. A good railroad is a good citizen of the region it serves. Nickel Plate has a quiet pride in the civic and business relations it has established with the cities, towns, and villages that line its tracks. Modern railroading is a business built on public contacts. The Nickel Plate Railroad maintains such contacts through its traffic offices in 44 cities throughout the United States. 44 offices staffed by Nickel Plate traffic experts who provide courteous and efficient service to the shipping and traveling public. Every time we help a shipper, every time we help a passenger, every time we punch a ticket, every time we handle a shipper, every time we serve a meal, public impressions are formed of us as railroaders, good, bad, or indifferent. 17,000 nickel platers know this, collectively and individually. They know it means loss or gain of the public's respect, on which depends the prosperity of the company as an operating railroad and their own security as nickel platers. For today, as always, good public relations means good business. We have had a glimpse of the territory served by the nickel plate road. It is a land good to have been born in, good to come to, to plant family roots, to establish and develop industry and commerce. This has been the story of that land, Midland, USA, in terms of the work it does and the life it leads. A part of that story, small or large, but we believe a significant part, has been and will continue to be the nickel plate story.